And today we're going to be working on the Asus Zenbook UM433DA. And this was mailed in because battery terminal ripped off the board. Okay, so battery terminal ripped off the board. And this package is coming from North Carolina. I already looked at the laptop and I can tell you every single pad is ripped off the board. This is the laptop right here. So the support for the connector are ripped off the board, one, two. This is the positive side of the connector. If you look here, we have three red wires and all of them connect to this big pad here. We have the middle two, the white and the yellow, and then we have the ground pins, three wires on the edge. So basically we can connect one wire to this pad here, one red wire to this pad here, and the two wires in the middle. And we can tell where each pad is going to. So I separated the battery connector from the battery cable. Let's take a look. That's the battery connector right there. It's nearly impossible to solder that connector back on the board because there are no pads on the board. I'm going to eliminate this option. I mean, the first thing we need to do is secure this cable down on the board somehow. And then we can run jumper wires. Let's say we secure it down with the glue like this. Yeah, I think that should work. And then we can just run a wire from inside, from here to here. Here to the other pad, which is this one, this one, and then ground. I think that would be the best option. First thing we need to do is actually glue this connector in place. And how do we glue it? Maybe we can use hot glue, or we can use crazy glue, or we can use silicon. I have the Gorilla Glue. So let's apply just a tiny bit. We do not want to apply a lot. And maybe some here and just spread it. Okay, that's it. Just a tiny bit goes a long way. And it's stuck. Great. See what happens when you use the right product. Okay, so now that we glued that connector down on the board, the connector is not going anywhere. Now what we need to do is run a jumper wire, one jumper wire, from any one of those three pins onto this pad here. So let's do some testing to make sure that we have the right pad. Meter in continuity mode. And this pad here, is it this one? Yes. So we're just going to scratch off this pad and we're going to run a wire from here to here. I think that should be enough. And I'm going to use the wires from a CAT5 cable because they are thicker than the jumper wire that we have, which is a 0.1 millimeter wire. Inside the CAT5 cable, you have a lot of wires. And these wires will be the perfect size for this job. Got some flux. Okay, so this one is done. And 
and all we have to do is cut the wires. We should be able to test from any one of the pins, this, this, or this. So let's test from here to right here. Yes. And let's test from here to this copper piece that's under the masking gear. Yes. Okay. This is good. Let's do the ground pin now. And we're going to use the same technique. I need a good, big, solid pad to run the wire to because these here are tiny, not enough surface. I wonder if this one is ground or not. Let me test. Meter in continuity mode. One probe on a screw, any screw on the board. And yes, this is ground. So we're going to run the wire from here to here. Or if there's anything closer, that would be even better. But I think this is the closest one. Okay, so that's one end. And let's do the other end. Let's do it like this. I kept it insulated so the wire does not touch any components around here. Just want to make sure that we have a good connection. So we have the black probe on a screw on the motherboard. This is all good. And now we only have two wires to run, the yellow and the white. And for those, we can just run the regular jumper wires that we use for iPhones, the 0.1 millimeter wires and now we can use our jumper wire and this jumper wire you can find for sale on our website and I can tell you that this is one of the best jumper wire in the market because solder sticks onto it very nicely. We do not have to tin the wire. Look at this, done. No need to tin the wire. And this one is gonna run all the way. It's gonna run all the way to right over here. Look at this. And next we're going to do this one here. You see how easy it is for the wire to stick to solder? And now we want to make sure that this wire is not going to touch the other wire. And let's see where this wire should go to. Uh-oh, it should go somewhere. It has to go right over here under this wire.
what I'm going to do is mask this area here so the wires do not touch. Let's quickly try the laptop, see if it powers on. And yes, I see the light right here. I do see the light. And the laptop is working. Awesome. Awesome. So we just need to apply UV light so we can cure this mask, the green mask. And we're going to be using our UV light a few seconds is enough to cure the mask and that's it the job's done now I can go home and we'll resume back on Monday. We have a lot of items that came in today. We have uh, four iPad Pros. Two of them are the 12.9 inch tablets. This one, the guy took it to CPR. CPR is like your break iFix. They are a franchise. He said they attempted to replace the charging flex cable, this one here, and they ended up ripping half of the pads from the board. Let me show you what I mean. Let's quickly go under the microscope. Look at this. Look at how many missing pads we have. The same customer also brought us a MacBook. We also have a package that came in and customer called us many times to check on his package if it arrived and it's an iPad Pro. What's wrong with this one? Broken piece inside the charging port. So it's exactly the same issue as the iPad Pro 12.9 that I just showed you. We also received this package here and looks like customer sent us a return shipping label. And this is an iMac A1419 EMC to A34. He sent us the motherboard only. We'll take care of this in another video. And another package we received is this one here. And it's an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Right here. For some reason, there is no touch on this iPad. It was the one you worked on last week. Can you fix whatever issue it has and finish the assembly? Who's this? I did a video about this where we fixed the touch and the display. I do not know why touch is not working with the customer. Maybe the screen was not connected properly or I don't know. We'll check. But I have a video on it and touch and display were working before. We'll check and see what's going on. And here we have a MacBook Air. Liquid damage. This one is uh, A1466. All right, so we'll work on this later also. I do not want to go through all the packages, but uh, just an idea of what we will be doing in the next couple of days. A lot of work, a lot of things to get done, and many of you are asking about the two Aces Gaming laptops that we unboxed in a previous video. If we're going to be doing a video on those, yes, but uh, I still have a lot of other devices that we need to work on before those, and we'll most likely do a video on them. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.